Welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss about Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids as you can see. So uh, what is Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids all about and uh, what is fluid behavior and uh, how are Newtonian fluids different from non-Newtonian fluids? Uh, what is Newton's law of viscosity and how the uh, viscosity changes with time or shear strain rate? We'll uh, discuss all uh, about that in this video. So uh, first of all, before starting with fluid behavior, we need to understand a few basics of fluid. So supposedly, fluid is flowing through a pipe. Let's draw a pipeline. A fluid is flowing through a pipeline. So first of all, let us consider this convention that we consider this as the y-axis and this as the x-axis. So this is vx and this is basically my y-direction. So when the fluid is flowing, the fluid front has a velocity profile like this. At the periphery, the velocity is absolutely zero due to no slip condition. Now we need to understand what is no slip condition and why is this velocity profile like this. The velocity towards the end, that is this boundary, the fluid layer touching the boundary has zero velocity due to no slip condition. Now no slip condition states that when one solid at a solid liquid boundary, when the liquid layer shares the boundary with the solid layer, both of them are at the same velocity. Since my solid structure, that is my pipeline, the boundary of the pipeline is at zero velocity, that is it is stagnant, so the fluid layer in contact with that uh, solid boundary will also be at zero velocity, that is it will also be stagnant. And that is the condition of no slip. That is no slip condition basically, because of which at the periphery the velocity is going to be zero, touching the boundary layer, that is the boundary of the pipe. So uh, due to no slip, this velocity is zero. So why is why does no slip exist and why is this velocity zero? There must be some force that is restraining the fluid motion that must be preventing the fluid to flow. That force is F and that divided by the area gives you the shear stress tau. That is tau is acting, the force corresponding to tau is acting in a direction opposite to the direction of the flow of the fluid, restraining its motion and hence at the boundary walls touching the fluid layer, the fluid layer attains zero velocity and at the center the velocity is maximum because the shear stress after passing through layers decreases at the center. So at the center it is minimum shear stress and maximum velocity. At the boundary, at the periphery, the velocity is minimum that is zero and the shear stress is maximum. There is the maximum amount of frictional forces uh, given by the boundary walls of the pipe. So uh, we see now we can uh, discuss the concept of Newtonian fluids. Uh, we know that Ohm's law. Ohm's law we have learned in class 11 that I is directly proportional to V. That is the current flowing across a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across the conductor. So what is the potential difference? The potential difference is the cause that creates the current to flow. So the current is my effect and the potential difference is my cause. So similarly, for any ohmic substance, this law is valid. Similarly, for any Newtonian fluid, Newton's law of viscosity is valid. So what is Newton's law of viscosity? Again, effect is directly proportional to cause. So uh, we can also write V is directly proportional to I in the same way. For similarly, here the cause is by tau that is the shear stress that is restraining the fluid to flow and because of that there is developing a gradient of velocity. If there would have been no boundary layers and the fluid would have been allowed to flow in free environment, there would have been no restraining force and all the velocities would be same. So the velocity gradient is my effect due to the shear stress that is created. That is the velocity difference. So if we take dvx dy as my velocity gradient or my shear strain rate, shear strain rate and tau as my shear stress, we can write that the effect is that proportional to cause, that is dvx dy is directly proportional to tau or tau is directly proportional to dvx dy. Now, when there is a proportionality relation, there will be a constant as we all know. For ohmic 
substances, it was resistance, V is equals to IR. For this case, it will be tau is equals to mu into dbx dy. So mu is the viscosity and that is a constant of proportionality and that is independent of any shear strain rate of any time it is only dependency of temperature that is mu is neither a function of uh, dbx dy or a function of time mu is not a function of dbx dy of time it is independent it is only a function of temperature so that is a constant of proportionality now this was the case of newtonian fluids or ohmic components whenever we consider non newtonian fluids now come, let us come to a general definition of uh, fluids if we consider a generalized equation if we write a generalized equation for fluids we can write it in the simplest form as tau is equal to mu 0 into dbx dy whole to the power n for n is equals to 1 the fluid becomes Newtonian or n is less than 1 or n is greater than 1 fluid becomes non-Newtonian I am writing it as nu and n nu for uh, better understanding n is less than 1 n is greater than 1 fluid is non-Newtonian for n is equals to 1 fluid becomes Newtonian because it takes the same form as Newtonian fluid that is mu is uh, mu into dbx dy that is directly proportional to dbx dy tau now we see that here it is tau is directly proportional to dbx dy whole to the power n now if for a pseudo plastic fluid for a pseudo plastic fluid Uh, the n is less than 1 so what happens is if this is less than 1 supposedly now we can break this as we can write this as tau is equals to mu 0 into dbx dy full to the power n minus 1 into dvx dy we can write this whenever this is multiplied uh, this will give the same form as this just we have broken the terms and we clock this as one unit so that that becomes comparable to the newtonian viscosity law that is my newtonian fluid expression so if we consider this as new effective new effective or new apparent that is apparent viscosity we may also consider it as, as mu apparent so we can write the expression of this as tau is equals to mu apparent into dbx dy now it is comparable to the newtonian fluid form but here it is not a constant the beauty of this thing it is a variable it is a function of dbx dy whole to the power n minus 1 so mu apparent is nothing but mu 0 into dbx dy whole to the power n minus 1 now we see for a pseudo plastic fluid we said that n is less than 1 so if n is less than 1 it is going to be something to the power something negative that is dbx dy will come to the denominator means it will be something like this mu 0 into dbx dy whole to the power something a a is greater than 0 a is positive so it is coming to the denominator because in the numerator it was negative that it does it come in the denominator now we see if we increase the shear strain rate mu apparent if we increase this mu apparent will decrease now what is exactly happening let us give an example Supposedly, example of pseudoplastic fluid is paint. If we dip our hand and try to create a shear strain rate, that is a motion, increasing the deviance dy, the apparent viscosity decreases. Same goes for ketchup. 
if we try to dip in our hand, trying to create a shear strain rate, there is a motion. The shear strain rate increases and the apparent viscosity decreases. It is pseudoplastic is a case of and represents pseudoplastic as PSE, PSE, sorry, PSE. That is a case of shear thinning. So shear thinning for pseudoplastic fluid. For N is less than one. Now for dilated fluid, for dilated fluid, again this expression mu apparent is equals to dvx dy whole to the power n minus 1 into mu 0. So we see that if n is greater than 1, dilatant fluid are expressing as dial, n is greater than 1, it remains in the numerator. It is dvx dy to the power something positive into mu 0. So with increase of this, it now increases. So it is a case of shear thickening. Example of dilatant fluid, cornstarch solution. You would often see YouTube videos that people working on cornstarch solution, though it's, it is a solution, it's a liquid initially, but as soon as you create a shear strain rate and you increase the shear strain rate, the apparent viscosity increases. That is the viscosity increases and it di becomes difficult to move. It tends to a semi-solid and this is dilatant fluid. So if we express it in the graph of shear stress, tau against dvx dy, that is my shear strain rate, it will be for Newtonian fluid, it will be something like this, wherein the slope is mean. For pseudoplastic, it is going to be something like this. For n is less than 1. And for dilated, it will be something like this. n is greater than 1 dilated. And this is pseudoplastic. n is greater than 1 dilated, n is less than 1 pseudoplastic tau against dvx dy. You can always check with the equations. Now having said this and having explained with examples cornstarch solution for dilatant and for pseudoplastic paints, initial thing, we will move forward to another type of non-Newtonian fluid that is very very famous. Very famous. And that has an expression of similar to Newtonian fluids but with an extra term of tau zero mu into dvx dy. Now you see it is directly proportional to dvx dy. It is having a linear relationship with dvx dy. But after a certain shear stress, that is tau is greater than tau 0. For tau is greater than tau 0, this expression follows. For tau is less than tau 0, dvx dy will be equal to c. Now what is the case? That is before a minimum shear stress, a threshold shear stress of tau zero is applied, there is no motion of the fluid. The apparent viscosity is infinite. After a certain shear stress, it behaves as a Newtonian fluid. The name of this fluid is Bingham plastic. fluid. It is a Bingham plastic fluid and the graph will be this is tau zero and this is the slope is mu. So it again it is uh, proportional to dvx dy and it behaves in the Newtonian fluid. This is for Bingham. Bingham like for tau zero. Now you see example of this is toothpaste. Before you apply a certain stress, certain shear stress, there is no shear strain rate, there is no motion, the apparent viscosity is zero. But after a certain shear stress is applied, the apparent viscosity 
becomes something and it behaves as a Newtonian fluid. So it is Bingham plastic fluid. So this is Bingham plastic fluid and these are pseudoplastic and dilated fluid as I have already explained. Now another group of fluid, very famous question for the placements that comes into action is blood. What kind of fluid is blood? Blood is a Bingham pseudoplastic fluid, a cason fluid. Now what is that? We club the expression for Bingham plastic and pseudoplastic fluid. It is nothing but this. Tau is equal to tau zero plus mu into Tvx dy whole to the power n. So it is having a form of pseudoplastic fluid combined with Bingham plastic fluid. So in the graph it will be something like this. It will have a form of pseudoplastic fluid and have a form of nature of Bingham plastic as well. That is, before a certain stress is applied, before you cut your skin, the blood will not come out. And after you do that, it will come out and behave as a pseudoplastic fluid. That is, after the blood comes out, if you dip your hand and try to create a shear spin rate, it will basically, it is less than one, so it will basically thin with time, and thin with shear spin rate. So if you try to apply a motion, it will thin. But before a certain shear stress rate, it will not come out, that is dv and dy will be zero. So it is a Bingham pseudoplastic fluid, a cason fluid, also known as a cason fluid. Now, another dependence of apparent viscosity with time is apparent viscosity decrease or increase with time. If my apparent viscosity increase with time, it is a Reopen fluid. If it decreases with time, it is a pseudoplastic sorry, extremely sorry, it's a thixotropic fluid. So it is sheer thickening and sheer thinning with respect to time. With time it becomes Thickened with time, it becomes thin. The apparent viscosity decreases and increases with time. This is also a form of viscosity dependence on time. So we have seen how a Newtonian fluid behaves. We have seen how a non-Newtonian fluid behaves, and its viscosity increases, decreases with shear strain rate, with time. What are the dependence? What are the types? Dilatant, pseudoplastic, Newtonian, Bingham plastic, Bingham pseudoplastic, and we have given common examples. Uh, that's it for today. If you like it, please give it a like, a big fat thumbs up. Uh, also, you can refer to the books like Ma Fa Fox MacDonald of uh, Fluid Mechanics uh, for further detailing. You can also refer to some NPTEL lectures or uh, lectures from other professors uh, because this doesn't contain a very detailed approach. It's just the basic or the crux of the subject that is being made, uh, made clear here. So comment, share to other students. Our aim is to reach other students. Like, subscribe if you want more updates. Hit the bell icon. That's it for today. Thank you.